Have you ever noticed that different bolts have different head markings? In this video, I'll take the mystery out of this and I'll show you what these mean. Because manufacturers don't just decorate the bolt for the aesthetic value. These hex head markings have specific meanings and they refer to the material the fastener is made of. Uh, not only the nuts, not only the heads, but also the nuts are marked to match the bolts. Now, you can see here, some of them stay upright and some don't. Some of them are smooth uh, and they also have letters. So let's start with the easy ones. These letters, this one says N, manufacturer's marking there. The N, maybe I should turn it a little bit there manufacturer's mark. This triangle is manufacturer's mark and this here is another lowercase n manufacturer's mark. This one has an uppercase letter P manufacturer's mark. So don't worry about those. What matters here is uh, counting whiskers. What kind of whiskers? These ones. On this one, you can see it's got three whiskers on it in a particular arrangement. That one also has three in the same arrangement. This one has six whiskers. One, two, three, four. There's a fifth one here and a sixth one there. And maybe a little, come on in a little closer. See if the fam camera can focus. There we go. Six whiskers on that one. And uh, these correspond, uh, like I said, to the material of the bolt and its strength. Take a look at this one here. There is two, how do I do this? I fold it in half, somewhere around here. Okay, there's two organizations that are involved with hex head markings. One is the Society of Automo Automotive Engineers and uh, they have their head markings uh, right away you can recognize this one which corresponds to this one. Mm, how do I hold this one to make it work? Something like that. No. Nope. But, and there we go. So, three whiskers here, three whiskers in the picture. And you can see the, you can see the material of the bolt that it has to be medium carbon steel. It has to be quenched and tempered. Not only that, but it has to have a tensile strength of 120,000 psi. That's how these, these numbers read. Sorry, not 120, 105,000 psi. Wrong line there. So for this bolt, where is it? There, this biggie. Its uh, tensile strength must be 105 thousand psi because it is bigger than inch and an eighth. Now the other organization is called ASTM and uh, the ASTM had he hex head markings are a combination of letters and whiskers. You can also see either nothing on a hex head as in the case of this there's only a manufacturer's uppercase letter P on it. Or you can see three whiskers in that arrangement and letters saying A325 or that one. And that's also A325, but three whiskers in that arrangement. And three whiskers in that arrangement as well also exist. And uh, these are the hex head markings for the ASTM bolts. American Society for Testing and Materials and they develop standards and uh, so the manufacturer like this one if they pick low carbon steel and they make a bolt out of it whatever the size of it between quarter inch and four inch it's got to have a tensile strength of 60,000 psi I'll explain this tensile strength in a sec so you get this idea and uh, these tables are widely available on the internet just google it so that's how these hex head markings work for bolts and nuts as well 
and you can see unmarked and you can see some special marks yep like on this one it's kind of hard to see but there are some lines around this nut here for this anchor bolt and and those lines would correspond to one of these nuts and you can see the ASTM standard number there so this is how the nuts are marked you can see materials they are chosen for the bolts or sorry nuts and uh, and their proof load and their hardness now on the sheet for nuts proof load is listed and on the sheet for bolts tensile strength is listed so I'm gonna explain with this super small spring what those terms mean when bolts are tested they are put into a clamp and it's pulled apart in this direction that way and that way much like you would stretch out a slinky I don't have a slinky and this coil spring it kind of resembles more a threaded fastener than a slinky so I'm gonna stretch on this one I know it's a small item but you know that you can stretch a spring a certain amount and it returns to its, or to its original size say if its length is this much and I can stretch it say this much and then it returns to its original size and I stretched this much extra on it there and it returns conveniently to its original size now this is where tensile strength and proof strength comes in metal items even though this is not coiled but it does stretch a little bit and it is flexible to a certain degree before metals break they stretch a certain amount the uh, concept of uh, proof proof load and this proof load means proof load means that uh, certain force is applied to the slinky and it returns to its original uh, shape and size you know that you can only stretch a slinky so far and if you overstretch it it will not get back to its original size okay so the proof load is at that limit and it's specific to the slinky it's specific to the size of the slinky and the material of the slinky or the uh, size and material of a bolt and uh, it's uh, easy to see that on a threaded let me just put this one in here on a threaded fastener if the nut is over tightened on it uh, the tightening procedure or the act of tightening is stretching and pulling the bolt longer and longer and after a while uh, the uh, the amount of force applied through the nut is uh, gonna stretch out the fastener so much that is uh, that it's not gonna get any tighter anymore it's just gonna stretch and strip the thread so that's proof load represents that limit and tensile strength tensile strength th yep is also a force the amount of force needed for a fastener to uh, be broken when it's pulled in two opposite directions that's why the tensile strength amounts are so many thousands of pounds it's a huge amount like this one 120,000 pounds of force is needed to uh, take apart a fastener with uh, such head head hex head markings and uh, the proof load of uh, nuts and bolts because uh, sorry nuts because nuts are uh, 
stubby and chunky. They, uh, they take a higher amount of proof load and uh, they still retain their dimensional accuracy and they are not taken over the yield point. The yield point is where the slinky stretches uh, out so much that it doesn't return to its original side, not side, size. So <clears throat> that's the meaning of these hex head markings. So next time when you have, for example, uh, an anchor bolting job and you lose one of the nuts, uh, think twice what kind of nut you're going to be replacing a lost factory original nut or when you're replacing a lost bolt that say mounts your engine in a car think twice before you replace a bolt that would otherwise cost you at the dealership say three bucks a piece uh, something from the corner hood corner uh, or neighborhood hardware store that would cost you 15 cents a piece think about it twice okay unless their head markings are identical they're not going to be perform in, they're not going to perform in an identical manner and uh, they can easily fail if they are substandard